find your people. I found my people and they're right here on the Sunday gathering and I can't sing, but I am happy. So welcome to our Sunday gathering. I'm Sandra, if we haven't met yet, and you are joining us for our 178th Sunday gathering. It's hard to believe, but I found my people. I think you found your people too, if you are here. I think we'd get along just famously if we're all in one group together. We come together every Sunday to create something different, something memorable, something inspiring, something to give us all hope and inspire for us for the week. And then also to know how close our loved ones really are. So today our core team is back. We have Mr. Darren Wynn, Phil Dykes, Carrie McLeod, and me, Sandra Champlain. Each week we take turns and we create, we get to use our creativity to inspire and who knows where it goes. So like snowflakes, no two Sunday gatherings are ever the same. We have a global communi community that you are part of right now. So whether you're watching us live or watching the replay, you're part of our family. Miss Carrie has created our theme for today and I'm going to let her introduce you to the whole thing. Over to you, Carrie. Thank you very much, Sandra, and it's lovely to be here. Today's theme actually was inspired by a group of women who did their best today to win the World Cup. They lost 1-0, but still they had to rise above everything else. Now, I don't know if you know, but women's football was actually started. Now, I've written her name down, Nettie Honeyball in England in 1894. It's a long time ago. And to think that this is the first time that we have ever, that I have ever become aware of women's football in a World Cup and that England has gone and had their try at getting there. I'm sure at some point, every woman on that football team was told, don't do it, you'll never reach it, you'll never do it. But they rose above what they were told and continued nevertheless. So I thought today would be a good opportunity to be inspired to never be put down, to always follow your soul, to always follow your calling because 11, well actually more than 11, a whole bunch of ladies took to the football field this morning and celebrated for more reasons than we would probably ever know. So as we move through today, we have Darren doing the opening prayer. We have Sandra doing, oh, I need to double check, Darren doing the, the healing and Sandra doing our reading. And then instead of an address, I'm going to introduce a talk by a lady I have so much respect for, so much time for. And this particular talk moved me at a time in my life where it really came along at the right time. So hopefully you'll be able to take something from this as well. And very recently I listened to it again, which is why I put it in today's gathering, because it might just be what you need to know as well. And then for the mediumship, Phil and I will be there. Sandra's going to do our words of the week and Darren's going to do our closing prayer. So without any other further ado, I'm going to pass to Darren for the prayer. Thank you for that, Kerry. And for anyone that saw what a wonderful game it was and how proud we all are here today. So without further ado, if you'd all like to close your eyes and join me for today's opening prayer. To our dear friends, helpers and loved ones of that world we call unseen, we unite here once again today as friends, brothers and sisters. We come together in love, peace and harmony under that banner of we don't die, to be of service in any way we can. As we unite here once again today, we allow ourselves to fall back into the arms of eternity. And as we do so, we surrender our own wants, our own needs and our own desires so that we can come together to the, for the greater good of all of mankind. And we surrender our own demands and expectations and allow the words and thoughts of those in the unseen world to flow in uninhibited 
and to be absorbed by all those here that are present, to allow ourselves all to feel that moment of joy, that moment of healing and that moment of upliftment. Each and every one of us comes together here today as the unique individuals that we are, coming from different lands within our world, coming together, speaking different languages and having different dialects, and coming together from different backgrounds and different understandings. But we come here together as one today in the knowing and understanding there are no barriers and there are no boundaries within your world. And there is no judgment so that we can all come together as one, as equals, and immerse ourselves once again in that unconditional love and that healing balm of your world. Each and every one of us finds it an absolute joy and privilege to be here today and to represent your world in any way we can. And we find it a joy and privilege to walk hand in hand, side by side with your world. And each and every one of us does this to the best of our ability and the best of our understanding. As we open up this Sunday gathering here today, we do so as always. Joy within our hearts and minds, smiles upon our faces and positivity within our minds and love in abundance so it can truly create that perfect ground in which the two worlds can come together as one. And in doing so, we ask once again that that healing balm continues to shine to all four corners of our world, bringing that in, in those, those that are in need at this moment in time, that joy, that love and that healing balm. So without further ado, my friends, we welcome you here today. Amen. Thank you so much. Darren, you have me for the reading. Over 10 years ago, I attended a workshop to learn how to write a book. There, I met a wonderful lady and her two eight-year-old twin girls, and they were all published authors. Mom was incredible, outgoing, joyful, and positive. Her name was Elina Fernandez, and I knew right away from her drive and her outgoing personality, that that's what led her little girls to be the same way. I haven't followed her all this time, but this past week a video popped up in my feed that she recently did a TEDx talk. It was on Rising Above, which Carrie had mentioned was the theme of this Sunday gathering. As I watched, I knew that her story is one that I had to tell you today. Elina and her family come from the Dominican Republic. And as a seven-year-old girl, her favorite thing to do was with her brother, they would explore the woods and go into the local dump. In her words, there was a landfill right behind the little shack in the slum we called home. And it was amazing. Yes, there was a foul stench, the ground felt mushy, and flies were everywhere. But it was a magical place where we could find little objects and artifacts. It was our sweet escape. One day I found something unusual. It was a soggy, smelly old magazine with words in English that I couldn't understand. I'd flipped through the pages and I was fascinated with the bright pictures. The kids wore jeans and tennis shoes and they had new books and toys and they looked so happy with their families. I savored every scene and then I turned to my brother and asked him the question that would change my life forever. What if we could learn this language? You see, I figured if I knew English, then I could live this wonderful life. Elina went on to do everything she could to earn money to take classes and learn English. And at the age of 15, she was able to qualify for a high paying job, attend college and move her family out of the slum into the city. What a go getter. One day, she boarded a vehicle that she thought was public transportation. It wasn't. She was trapped, couldn't escape, and the worst things you can imagine happened to her. She survived, but wished that she didn't. 
and grew to hate every inch of her body. She felt unloved, unsupported, and wanted to die. She says, in just six months after being kidnapped, I got my wish. I was in the back seat of a car that crashed and flipped. I was trapped underneath it. And as if in slow motion, I began to rise and looked down at my lifeless body as it was being rushed to the nearest hospital. In the ER, I could see my brother weeping and begging the medical staff to bring him news. They told him, there's nothing more we can do for her. My body was dead, but my mind was more alert and my spirit more alive than ever. I witnessed my brothers being I witnessed my brother being relentless. So the doctors turned their attention back to me and eventually revived me. It looked painful, but I didn't feel it. Instead, I was experiencing freedom and peace and unconditional love. Yes, heaven. I wanted to feel like this forever, but I heard the message that it wasn't my time yet. And I, as I came back into my body, all of my senses were flooded with pain. During my eight day coma, I found a new treasure with language in an unexpected place. You see, Alina rose above and brought that experience into her life and now teaches emotional wholeness programs, inspiring moms all over the world to break cycles, feel peace, feel whole. And she does that starting through her website, which is thepositivemom.com. What she realized is that language is able to transform our lives that we can be a witness or an observer to our own pain, do something about it and grow from it. That unprocessed emotional pain can manifest in our bodies and minds in negative ways. She says that any emotion lasts 90 seconds and we can ride those feelings out, whatever they may be. We can identify how the pain feels in our body and mind. Then we can use language to call ourselves by name and validate our pain. We can do this by being our own best friend and by talking out loud or writing down to ourselves. So in my example, if it were me, I could say, Sandra, it's okay to feel what you're feeling or Sandra, your emotions and reactions make sense. Or Sandra, you are not alone. I am here for you. Elina says by doing this practice, we'll be able to learn the native language of our emotions and feel seen and heard and safe and supported through self-love. When we rise above and just take two minutes to do this practice, we can heal from the inside out. We are naturally more compassionate and we make space for new treasures to come into our lives. I know that hearing her story this week made a huge difference for me. And I trust that the story has made a difference for you. If you wanna watch her TED talk, you can simply go to YouTube, of course, and type in What Dying Taught Me About Living by Elina Fernandez. So I'll now pass you over to Darren for the healing. Thank you for that, Sandra. I'm now going to take you into our healing segment. When the word healing is mentioned, we naturally go to what's, you know, think about what's going on within our world. And when you look, we've got the wildfires, we've got wars, we've got political unrest, we've got all kinds of things going on. Um, and absolutely, that's where our focus should be. But when we look around ourselves individually, think of how much good we've got going on. You know, Kerry's already mentioned about the women's football. And I'm not talking just about the winning team or the teams that win the final. But if you look at every team that was in the World Cup for the women's football, 
look at what how far they've come what they've achieved and how happy does that make you feel you know the world is evolving it is changing there is a lot of positivity out there um and all i can think is wow 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 look at how the world's evolved you know we've got a women's football uh, world cup you know we wouldn't have had that years ago and when you think individually there's a lot to be happy and proud about and a lot to show gratitude for which is the name of our song today but when you think positively and thankfully and show gratitude for what we've got around us to me i think that sends out a lot more power to the universe to transform into that healing balm that is needed so what i want us to do while this song's being played you can keep your eyes open you can close your eyes whatever you choose to do but what i'd like us to try is try and being positive and thankful for everything we've got around us everything positive going on within the world which I'm sure will create a much better power for the unseen world to cascade into the healing balm and the healing energy that is needed today. So if we can try that, just be grateful and thank you and positive thoughts and energy sent out for those to transform into that healing power that is needed. Thank you for leading us into that healing, Darren. It is incredibly humbling to be here and to be full of gratitude on the Sunday gathering. A Sunday gathering that started over three years ago. A Sunday gathering that was inspired where it seemed everything came together, even though the world was locked down through a horrible virus. Here we are. Out of something dreadful comes something beautiful. And I'm eternally grateful for that. People said that an online gathering will never work. People said online demonstrations of mediumship would never work. People said online courses for mediumship would never work. And yet here we are out of lockdown, moving out of severe COVID restrictions and people are still using and relying on online services, online training and attending online demonstrations. The world has truly changed, hasn't it? And as we look at how that world has changed, to encompass change, we have to let go of things that haven't, that no longer are needed. And as we look at what's no longer needed, we see truly what is needed. And what is needed is this online community, an online community that is needed by many. You're here. However you came to us, however you found us, whoever you've told about us, in some way you are now part of this community. And when we look at how things move, we have to look at what we must rise above to get there. I'm sure every single one of us, every single person here on the Sunday gathering at times, we're told it'll never work. But I've got a Mahatma Gandhi quote and it says, first they ignore you, then they laugh, then they fight you, then you win. And never a truer saying can there be about standing tall for something that means something for you. Now I'm going to introduce a talk by Brenny Brown. And I first came around about Brenny Brown when I was in a corporate post before my world of mediumship opened up to what it is now. I was a woman in a field of men, in a senior role in an organization. And so many times, I was undermined or spoken over and I had to choose what I dealt with and what I ignored time and time again. You know that feeling, don't you? My gran used to say, pick your battles and you'll win the fight. Brenny Brown, I listened to at that time and it inspired me to go about my day following her words. Now, that was over 10 years ago. Brenny Brown's words happened to come into my 
um, awareness very recently, and I didn't realize just how much her words meant to me. Because once again, she inspired me. She inspired me to stand and represent the spirit world in the way that they wished. So online, offline, whether you're here for the first time, whether you're here for the 179. 179th time, thank you for being here. Each one of us is incredibly grateful for you being here and incredibly grateful for you being part of our community. Here's that quote one more time. It's not the critic who counts, not the man who points out how strong, how the strong man stumbles or where the doer of deeds could have done better. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs and comes up short again and again, but there is no effort without error or shortcoming but who knows the great enthusiasms, the great devotions, who spends himself a worthy cause, who at the best knows in the end, the triumph of high achievement, and who at the worst, if he fails, at least he fails while daring greatly, so that his place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who knew neither victory nor defeat. Theodore Roosevelt. Those words to me just needed repeating because Carrie, that's a beautiful, beautiful speech that you picked and it really resonated for me and I needed to hear that again. So ladies and gentlemen, we hope you enjoyed that. We are now going into our demonstration of mediumship where again, our bold and courageous mediums put their sel themselves out there, trusting that the thoughts and the feelings and maybe the smells and pictures and that all comes into their being is there for you to serve you to, so that you know that your loved ones are around. Our time is short during our Sunday gatherings, yes, but a handful of people speak on behalf of the spirit world, just like Carrie, Phil, Darren, and I speak on behalf of everyone who's in our, our uh, gathering today. So if this is your first time here or not, I just like to run through how the medium demonstration portion works. First of all, Carrie and Phil are our tutors of mediumship with our We Don't Die family. They're longtime mediums and teachers. They're just good people and they're my friends. They will work one at a time they will put in a request to the spirit world to work with them this is in the spirit world's hands as much as we may pray that it's our loved one that comes through the spirit world are working behind the scenes they know exactly who is here too you may not think we know or they know but they know you will hear either carrie or phil give a few initial bits of information about the person that has connected with them when we go on to the spirit world, we are still real people. We are not balls of energy. We are real. Uh, we still have our personality, which we get to see time and time again every Sunday, but we're still us without maybe the baggage. You know, we get to keep the good stuff. So Phil or Carrie will describe this person, might be a man or a woman, maybe what they did for a living, who knows, those few initial bits of information, really listen. We often have one to 200 people in our gathering. And if you can understand all the information that they said as your person, now who is your person? It could be a loved one, could be a friend, it could be a family member, could be somebody a little bit distant. So you really need to pay attention, listen in. But if you can understand all the information that they just described about a, about a person you know that is no longer walking this earth okay they're in the spirit world we want you to press your raise hand button it's easy go find your raise hand button press it for me just so you know how it works and if you've done this 178 times before do it why i ask you to do that is just to see how the controls work on your side so it goes from raise hand, and once your hand is raised, it should say now lower hand, and you'll wanna press lower hand. 
sometimes it happens that more than one person can accept all of the information. And so at that point, Phil or Carrie will work to get it down to one person. When that one person is identified, and it may be you, I'm going to press a button on my side. You'll get something that pops up. Press here. The host would like you to unmute, and you'll see just where to do that. We need your voice, or we would like your voice. We don't need to have your camera on. Don't worry. Your camera will remain off. But when you work with the medium, your job is simple because you don't say much. All we ask from you is a good hearty yes, no, or I don't know with the information they give. Oftentimes it happens, the medium may ask you to tell, you, tell them about your person. Don't do that. We want everybody to know that it really is your loved one who is making contact with Carrie or Phil today and giving messages. About these messages, the spirit world is very sneaky. And I find myself that if I listen to the messages as if they are for me, they can greatly impact my life. So I think they're sneaky that way and we love them for it. What we like to do is place, play a piece of music. This is another unique one that Carrie has picked out so that we feel good. So it is a peppy tune. I haven't heard it for a while, but while we are expressing gratitude, like Darren said, why not just imagine, and of course our imagination is our communication to our friends in the spirit world, imagine that they're all with you. Think of times that you're grateful for. Think of fun things you did together. Whether or not you get the communication today, doesn't matter. Your loved ones are with you, not just on Sunday at this time, but they support you in their lives. They have work to do and lives to live, live in the spirit world, but they're only a breath away and they can easily keep a foot in both worlds. So let me play that song for you. And then we will be back with our demonstration of mediumship. Are we human or are we dancers? Uh, dancer. Hey, good dancer, there we go. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It's an absolute pleasure as always to be here. So hello to Kerry, Darren, Sandra. You know, that talk by Brenny Brown really has hit home. And before I begin, I need to say a few things. To all those ladies that took to that football pitch today, you stood in that arena and you represented your country, but so did every other lady. And so did you at some point in your life. And it's that that counts, standing up for your beliefs, your intentions, but also your truths. That's what it's about, being in that arena. Whether we succumb, whether we succeed, whether we fail, but we stood there and we did it. That's what it's all about. And gaining that experience is absolutely incredible. So as usual, this part of the Sunday gathering is about mediumship. It's about your loved ones and how they come forward. And as a medium, we want to be the best that we can. And in our minds, we might say or think, what is a good contact? What is a good, what is good evidence? What is objective? Well, that's the worst thing that we can do as a medium because it isn't up to us. It's not our story, it's your loved ones. They have that choice and it's the recipient that receives that message, that receives that evidence, that really can only make that decision. But if we do our jobs properly, it's all about inspiring the living, not just proving that we survive physical death, but inspiring ourselves to pull our socks up, to live our best and truest life and doing it our way. Frank Sinatra sung it about doing it his way. That's what we should do. So as I become aware of the spirit world, ladies and gentlemen, I do believe I have father. And as I work with father, I hear the name of John. And I know that John was a very passionate man. And I know also, as I was talking about singing, I feel he would sing. And I actually feel as well, he would have sung that song of, I did it my way by Frank Sinatra uh, as well. But I also feel with dad, he was quite a jovial man and a man that knew his own mindset. And I also believe with dad that he was a man that would 
never asked for help. He would, how can I put this? He would always try and do things, fix things himself. So I know I have father. I know his name is John. I know he would have imitated singers, especially Frank Sinatra, I sing it my way. But I also feel as well that that sense of humor that he is known for, but I also feel that he would always try things himself before asking for help. And I actually feel that he wouldn't ask for help that much. Thank you very much, Phil. I know we had some friends who, when you said father, put their hands up. So I put everyone's hands down. If you can understand all that information, go ahead and put your hand back up. All right, Phil, we have Emma with her hand raised. Emma, if you could press your unmute button. Hello. There you are. Hello. Hello, how are Hello Emma. How are you? I'm okay. Thank you. How are you? Good. I'm very well. Do you understand everything I've said? Uh, yeah, I think so. You think so? Then would you understand with your dad, he wouldn't care what other people thought? Yeah. Because I know here, like I said, he would sing. He wasn't bothered about who would hear him round about. I also know he would voice his own opinion as well. I think so. Because I know there's a sense of he stands in his own truth. Now, with your dad as well, would I be right in saying that he knew his way around a car engine or he thought he did? I think so. Because again, there's a sense here where I would try and fix everything myself, but I know he, and it wasn't just cars. I actually feel it was do it yourself, DIY around the house. Um, probably. Probably. Hmm. Bear with me. Okay. With your dad as well, would you understand where um, there was a long illness before he passed? Yeah. Because I know I want to check in here because you're saying probably, but I want to just check in here. But I just feel as well with your dad that he was a man of few words, but what he said was quite poignant and meaningful because I feel he was quite direct. I'm not sure. You're not sure. Bear with me. With your dad, if I said to you that he would say what he thought. Um, I'm not sure. I'm going to say I'm not with you, Emma, because okay. you should know this for something here is not right. And I've got to stand up and be honest about that as a medium with you saying you're not sure, blah, blah, blah. It doesn't feel right. You should know this. So I need yeah. to be speaking to somebody else, Sandra. I do apologise, Emma. I'm That's sure fine. your dad's around, but it's got to make sense. And as a medium, I've got that responsibility to get to the right person. Yeah. I was too young to know. Hi, that's absolutely fine. That's absolutely fine. But this, what I should be talking to, the person should know all this. So that's absolutely fine. Okay. Thank you, Emma, for talking to me. All right. Phil, we have a lady named Kelly who can take everything except for the first name. And then I also know we have a couple other people that just put their hand. Okay. That's fine. I want to be able to, somebody, can we drop everyone's hand, Sandra? And I want everyone to. Think about what I've said, because that first name I will not change because I heard it very loud and clear. I can't change it into something else. And I need that person who's put their hand up to come back who knows everything. Everything, including the name of John. OK, we have Stacy, Charlene great. and Emily with their hands raised. OK, that's fine. Oh, oh my hands went back me. down when I said it. OK. OK. That's funny. But I want to go back to a couple of things that I said, because I need to, as that medium, go back to that strongest piece of it. He would know his way round uh, the car engine. And I also want to say he would have actually tried to either rewire and he wouldn't ask for help. I know that. OK, we're down to one person, which was Stacy. OK. Hi, Stacy. There. Can you... OK, good. You can hear Hello, me. Hello, Stacy. Do you understand Hi. everything I've said? I do. I hesitated because I didn't want to be that person. That's absolutely fine. <laughs> As that responsible medium, what I say to the spirit world is give me evidence I've not given before. OK, um, with your dad, would it be right in saying that there's memories where he get a little bit worse for where, where alcohol was concerned, but in a funny way? Yes. And if I said he would sing even louder? Oh, yes. 
And after I said also that he would sing a song that would get on your nerves, it's almost yeah. like do it deliberately. Because all I keep on hearing in my mind is I know a song that gets on your nerves, gets on your nerves. That's as much singing as I'm going to do. But I know that's how he comes across to me. But I also feel with your dad, like I said to the last lady, he had his opinions on life and he would speak them quite bluntly and truthfully. Yes. And I also feel with your dad uh, as well that I want to say go back to where he would have tried everything to fix himself, cars and DIY in the house. Yes, absolutely. And, and I just feel here he would make do and mend. He would try and fix with whatever he had around him. Yes. Almost where there's a, either a, a nickname in the family called Mr. Fix-It. <laughs> yes. Okay, because I know I keep on hearing that 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 nickname there, but it, I just feel with your dad as well. He was a man of his word, though. If he said something, he would do it. I don't think so. Bear with me. Where it came to not just family but friends, he would give his word and do his best. I want to say. Yeah, to friends, yes. Because I know that's the way his mindset, because as you said, no, he, he just moved me towards friends. But mm -hmm. I also feel here, Stacey, that your dad was that person that would put his arm around you and comfort you. Yes. And I know there was a time in your life when you were younger where there was a grief and a loss of another family member where he would have consoled you. Yes. And mm -hmm. I know, you understand that? Yes, sorry. Yes, yes. That's fine. because I know here he brings it, and I know that should be a very close member of the family, if not mum, sister, a female. Would you understand? Yes, because I, I know he brings this to my mind as well. But I also feel as well that there's memories of your dad writing cards last minute. So I know he was quite forgetful. Yes, and what I'd be writing saying you've kept some of those cards. Yes because I know he makes me aware of that collection of being kept uh, as well. But I also feel with your dad um, that he was a man that liked to entertain. He liked to be the centre of attention. Yes. Because I know here it's not just about the singing. There must have been jokes as well. Yes. Because, again, I've got that impression here of jokes being told and almost engaging and making the family listen to him and friends. Yes. And I know there would have been times where the family rolled their eyes out loud. Loud. I know my wife has a wonderful way of doing that. And I know here um, that people would go, oh, no, that, that story again. Yes. <laughs> I want to just bring that personality and character of your dad and those memories to you because is making me feel where there's that need for upliftment at the moment where you've been looking at life and wondering what is there for me. Yes, absolutely. And what I'd be right in saying, there's a birthday coming up very soon as well. Um, yes, yes. I think what, I'd be right in, what I'd be right in saying it's the 1st of September. No. Okay. You can send me an email and let me know that I'm right when that penny drops, because I know your dad, when he remembered things, he made a point of highlighting it and saying, I've not forgotten, because right. I know there's that sense here with him of not backing down. He could be quite stubborn at times. Very, yes. Because I know here, as I go back and said, your daughter said, no, he will not change it, okay? Okay. I'm going to leave his love with you and let you know that he's very much with you, trying to bring that upliftment, but he's also trying to fix things around you to help you see what is there for you in life and have gratitude for oh, it. That's sweet. Thank you so much. I'm going to leave his love with you and say thank you very, very much. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you, Stacey. Thank you, Phil. Thank you, Dad, of course. Okay. OK, um, I know that I have a. Again, I've got another father, ladies and gentlemen, but I know this father would have um, made model aircrafts um, and I know there would have been the models of the Spitfires and the Wellingtons. And I get the feeling here they would have been hung on the ceiling. Do you know, we get little bits of fishing wire or cotton and put them on the ceiling and hang them. Um, and I know there should be memories of this as well. Um, but I also feel with dad uh, as well that he was a man 
the light to be quiet. So I know there's the model aircrafts, I know he was quiet, but I also feel with him, um, and it feels like I want to be in the United Kingdom as well with him. So somebody must understand this. Dad in the spirit world, model aircrafts, I know he was very quiet, but I know I want to be in the United Kingdom. Thank you, Phil. All right, friends, who can understand this information? Please press your raise hand button. No hands up. That's absolutely fine. I'm just going to look at this for a second time because I don't want to change this evidence too much um, or at all. I may have made a mistake with the relationship, but does anyone understand the information if I take father or dad away? Model airplanes in the United Kingdom. Josephine has her hand raised. Josephine, are you there? Hi, Sandra. Hi. Hello, Josephine. Do you understand everything I've said? Yes, but it was my husband. He made the models. He made the models. Can I just see just for a second, Josephine? It's your husband that made the models, but dad should be in the spirit world. Yes. That's fine, because I just want to make sure that I'm with the right person here. Then with your dad, would you understand that he was the quiet one? Yes, very, but my husband's That's in spirit as well. Ah, that's fine. Don't let me don't tell me anymore. You should know that as a medium. Yes, um, I should. <laughs> but I also feel here with your dad, he didn't like to cause a fuss either. Yes, that's right. And if I'm also right with your dad, he also wouldn't acknowledge when he was wrong. He had that stubborn streak to him as well. Absolutely, yes. Because I know here, as I'm just acknowledging where I've got things wrong, he's not acknowledging. So I know here he was like that uh, as well. But I mm -hmm. want to go back because you've told me your husband. But if I said with your husband, <laughs> those model aircraft were a passion of his. Yes, <clears throat> yes, yes. And if I also said, Josephine, that, that they weren't just a passion of him, it must have been stories that he was told about the planes that got him interested. Yes, that's correct. Because I do feel there's been talk of that impressed upon him of the war years and somebody that lived through them that watched the plane comes over, that came over. Yeah. yeah. But I also feel as, as well, um, your dad must have talked about this occasionally as well. Yes, yes. And your dad must have mentioned about where not just the planes going over, but where there was talk of either the wing tipping, where they tipped the old the the um, German bombs to knock them off course. <clears throat> I'm not going to tell you anything, but my husband was obsessed with the war. That's okay. fine, because I know here, please don't tell me anything, you know that, but I know here it's all about those stories and everything it else. It is, yes, but I know. Okay, But I also know that those aircraft were like his pride and joy as well. Yes. And I want to say there must have been not just where he, he built them and put them together, but where he painted them as well. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and it's almost what I want to say. These took hours and hours to do. Yes. And it's almost where I don't want to go to sleep. I want to stay up late on the kitchen table and paint and put them together. Yeah, he spent a lot of time. Uh -huh. Because I do feel that it's where he would sit late at night, but then again, I'd be up early in the morning before elsewhere and, and I'd be carrying on because I know there's a real passion towards it. You've already said about the war, so I know there's that meaningful thing. But I also mm -hmm. feel with your husband as well, that he liked to watch and listen and take things in. Yes. He didn't like to be the centre of attention. No. He thought he no, he didn't, or no, he did. No, he didn't. He didn't. No, that's no, fine. That's fine. When we get the no, it confuses me. But I know Sorry. here. That's fine. But I know here the way that he is is very genuine, very honest, and he doesn't like any awkwardness. He doesn't like. In fact, yes. He doesn't like confrontation either, does he? No, that's right. And I also know he would have a good sense about people in general. Um, sometimes. 
Would I be so, also be right in saying, Josephine, that he would also voice his opinion of people that you associated with or were connected to? Oh, well, yes, absolutely. <laughs> because I know here that's what he wants to do. And again, he just makes me aware of his thoughts towards you and where you've already got thoughts. He just needs to acknowledge that as well. And the thing, there must be, um, oh my word, would I be right in saying that when he did some of the models, either children got hold of them as well? Well, yes, but, 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 yes. Okay, because it feels like I'm in a panic, a state of anxiety. Don't break them, please, sort of thing. But yeah. I know here he keeps on pulling down the Spitfire and shooting bullets, and I know mm. that's about worry about things around you and everything else. But I know mm. that's his private thing towards you. I also feel with your husband, you did everything you could to care for him before he passed. Yes, that's correct. And I also know from right here that he wasn't able to converse with you near the end. That's right. Because he tells me you were sat with him, holding his hand, stroking his face. Yes. And I know you kissed him goodbye. In fact, not goodbye, good night. He's just made me aware of and I also want to say, while I've been talking to you, you've actually had the thought in your mind, I love you, because he said, I love you back. Thank you. I'm going to leave your husband with you and his model airplanes. Um, one last thing. Would I be right in saying he attempted to make a ship in the bottle? He did build ships, but not in a bottle. Okay, the, thank, thank, bear with me then. Let me just go back for a second. He must have tried to very uniquely make a ship or something no, out did, of that. Did, That's did, fine. Did, That's fine. Because I know here he makes me aware of this. And it's about patience. It's about time. And I know that's why he's coming forward. And I know with your dad, where he didn't like to speak out, he says, just at the moment, shh let everything pass over. I'm going to leave both their love with you and say thank you very much for allowing me to do this, okay? Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Josephine. Thank you, Phil. Okay. Sometimes we get shown the weirdest, weirdest of things. Um, and sometimes, ladies and gentlemen, we don't know where to begin with them. Okay. I don't know if somebody's having a laugh with me, as in a metaphor, a little bit naughty, or this actually happened sort of thing. So I'm just biding my time to make sure um, I get this right. Um, in fact, I feel that's part of it as well. Um, I want to talk um, about a gentleman. I do feel it could be husband, because I've got that sense here. I know he has got a, um, in fact, I'll come back to that a little bit, but I know husband would have kept a snake, um, and I do feel it was quite a big python um and i know here uh, as well with him um that he um loved to tease people with this snake as well so i know here he, he would inappropriately move it around people um but i also feel with him that he's just a genuine fun loving husband i want to say thank you very much phil oh he was a snake lover huh all right, mm -hmm. who can understand this information, please? And I must admit, change. I cringed when I saw the snake because I thought to myself, Ooh, okay. I know they're not slimy, ladies and gentlemen, but it's just, yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Phil. And if it's not husband, I'll let go of that relationship, but I know I need to be speaking. In fact, in fact, bear with me one second. I do. I feel, I'm going to change the relationship. I feel I want friend that had that snake. Okay. So all the other information, not husband, but a friend yeah. with a big old snake. Someone asked, does it have to be a python, Phil? Doesn't have to be a python. I just got the impression of a big snake. So I thought it was a python. Doesn't have to be. So. Caitlin, if you can understand that, press your raise hand button. Uh, Naomi's got her hand raised. Now that we know it is not to be a python. Naomi, hello. Hi, Sandra and Phil. Hello, Naomi. Um, you understand what I've said, a friend in the spirit world or dad, because I'm just working on that, but had a snake and it should be in the spirit world as well. I had a friend who had a very large python 
I thought it was because I need to get rid of it. I do not like snakes. So I, I know here that's fine. But would you understand where he used to tease people with the snake? Uh, yes. Because I, I, my friend had a huge one and I, I, I locked myself in the bathroom because of it sort of thing. Um, Python, that is. Um, but I know here as well um, that he had a terrific sense of humour, a really weird, and he could be a little bit risque with that sense of humour as well, Naomi. Absolutely. Because when I referenced the snake and everything, I got all the innuendos with it as well. So I know that's his personality. And I know Chandra's shaking her head, but I know this is just, he was a little bit of a live way and he didn't know what you were going to get. Yes. Because I just feel with your friend, he was that type of character. Now, even though I'm painting a picture that is larger than life and this fun loving guy, I feel he suffered with depression though. Yes. Because I know that mood swings, that 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 um, that exuberance that he has is a cover for what's going on underneath uh, as well. Um, but I want to say, and I want to go back to the snake. He would have treated it like it's like one of his children, like a child. Absolutely, yes. Because it feels like I want to lie with it and stroke it and do all those things, all the things I would just not doing a million years might do it from the spirit world, but never here but I know here but I also feel as well that he, he tried to show people that it was safe and harmless right if I said that and, and I mean this in the best way not in a, a cruelty to animals but he would tease the snake by putting its hand in, in the mouth or trying to and showing that it would turn away it wouldn't strike um it's possible. I never okay. really saw him that, do that. that. That's fine, because I just know that he's trying to convince me and I get the impression he would have done this with other people uh, as well. Um, but I want to say that it's almost were towards the end, I want to say, with your friend's life, that he seems to really go downhill, as in not as in health wise, but it just in mental capacity. It wouldn't surprise me. I that's fact. Okay, because I, I know here, and if I said he became very solitude as well. Yes. Because I know there's a real impression with him of wanting to be on my own and wanting to be a bit of a recluse. And, and that's why I feel I'm going downhill because I'm going into my own little world here as well. Um, but I want to go back to the happy days where there was memories of you and him just having fun. Oh, most certainly. And if I said there should be memories of where we used to go to a lake or round a lake at some point, whether to either do a cafe or just walk around, would that make sense? I understand the lake. That's fine, because I know here he just takes my mind to it for some reason. And I know it was good times, happy memories. And I want to say that th these are the memories that he holds very dear, because I feel that you mentally supported him, but also lovingly supported him as well in the sense of being that friend yes because i know that's one of the reasons why i want to come to you today he wants to thank you for what you did because i know since he's passed or you found out the thoughts were um i wish i would have known i wish i could have done more yes because i know that's why he's acknowledging that friendship and what you did for him uh, as well would i be right in saying he had tattoos as well Oh, yes. Oh, my okay. goodness. Yes. And, and, and with those tattoos, they were really different. Absolutely. Yes. Because I know they're not just names and animals and things like that. It seems like there's really different symbols of almost what I want to say, different religions that have different meanings. Not religions that I know of. No, not religion, you know, but they were different shapes that had very personal meanings yes and would I be right in saying one of them was like a snake coiled through I if I remember correctly there was a snake that's fine because I know here he makes me aware of that tattoo as well but I know the the reason for him coming forward is just to bring that upliftment but to support you at this time were things have been a little bit challenging for you in what you want to do in life personally understand i do 
And I know this is about him trying to give you that direction. And as a snake coils and twists and turns, he says, this is what life's going to be, those twists and turns. But stick to those intentions and stick to your truth, my friend, he said. OK. Thank Can you. I believe his love with you? But no. Um, He's just done something. It didn't make sense to me. Just bear with me one second. Thank you. Um, if I said, I'm going to do this very politely. If I said some of the things you want to do in life, there's a need for extra finances for. Would you understand? Absolutely, yes. Because he keeps on giving me and showing me rare coins here. So I know it's all about he knows your need and he's going to try and help and fulfill that. OK, that's from him in the way that he brings it as well. Um, you also have husband in the spirit world. I, I They were best friends. Yeah, that's fine. Because um, with your husband, would I be right in saying he could do coin tricks, roll it through his fingers? Mm. No. Then there must be something to do with either gold coins. Um, yes. That's fine, because it keeps on putting them across his fingers. It's almost where, um, let's just have a look here. These are different. Um, the, the, this, oh, go right. I know, that's fine. Okay, I'm just going to give it as a good. He keeps on saying pennies from heaven. So would you understand where you've been finding coins, Naomi? Yes, that's fine, because I know he keeps on mentioning the, but it's almost like I want to do tricks and things with them. So I know you said no, but I know he keeps on doing this. Would you understand where your husband um, had that way that he was quite successful? In his own right, yes. Absolutely, because I know here, once he put his, and I know he, he really loved you as well, because once you needed or he thought you needed, he always provided. Yes. And I know he's still providing now from the spirit world. So I know those thoughts of what you want to do He's acknowledging them and he's trying his best to bring those extra finances in. So I'm going to leave his love with you, Naomi, and your lovely friend with the snake. You can gladly take him. And I'm going to leave that and say thank you very much for allowing me to do that, Naomi. I feel it was such a privilege. Thank you so much. It's absolutely a privilege to talk to you and everybody else and to work on behalf of the spirit world. I'm going to hand back to Sandra, ladies and gentlemen. As always, it's a pleasure to be here. In the beginning of the Sunday gathering, as Kerry mentioned, as we all come together, which was announced, and Sandra did a wonderful video. Um, in the beginning, people said, as Kerry rightly said, it wouldn't work, it couldn't happen. Well, 179 weeks later, almost four years, ladies and gentlemen, we're still here. And the majority of the time, it has been myself, Dara, and Sandra, and Kerry. It has been wonderful. Every time is like the first time. We never know who's going to come, what stories they bring, who they want to. But all we do is open our minds to the spirit world and let those people come forward who are in the greatest need. And as Sandra said, if you can take some of the evidence or it has meaning for you, then please do. As the spirit world have this wonderful way of inspiring people. Please understand as well, the spirit will never give anything bad or live, live, leave things on a bad note. It's all about inspiring you to live and to live your truest life. It has been a pleasure, as always. My name's Phil on behalf of Kerry. I want to say thank you to you all for being part of this community and growing this community. And I'm going to hand back over to Sandra. Oh, thank you so much. And as friends, I can tell you it's number 178 today. 178, 179. We've got Shirley Ann back with us. We've got our friend Elaine. We've got Darren and myself. And we could have a little zippity doo da. We'll get to that next week. Some announcements. First of all, I know every time we have the demonstration, we want more. We just give a taste so that you know that your loved ones are around. They can hear you. They are with you. It is frustrating, I know, because we want to have our lights go on and off and know that they're right here. Get involved in a little conversation with them. Have some memories, some feelings. Go down memory lane. And you may surprise yourself that all of a sudden thoughts and images and things that will just come unexpectedly. You know, that's 
subtle ways that they say, I'm right here with you. They are, they truly, truly are. And I think getting medium readings are great, but also something that may <laughs> be even one step further. I was talking to my friend Robert this past week. The thing that turned the needle for most of us is not just having a reading, but giving someone a reading. I always recommend that we take a little bit of the training ourselves, not that you have to go be a medium, but when you start working with your psychic sense, you start working with people on Zoom, one-on-one, -on -one, and all of a sudden you know things about them and their past and what's going on. And then all of a sudden you move into the medium portion where you start talking to their loved ones. And as Phil just had that snake around him, you start, feeling these things that you know are not coming from you and your memories. And then when you start verbalizing them to someone else, they say, yes, I can take that. Yes, I can take that. It is mind blowing how you start feeling the feelings of the person that's no longer walking this earth. So we always encourage you to take a class or two because they're just amazing. So speaking of classes and what's going on this week, first of all, our friends Carrie and Phil are getting on an airplane tomorrow. To our friends who are in the Toronto, Canada area, they will be doing some classes and also some demonstrations you might want to check out. And they've got a classes in New Jersey, live ones that is, coming up the end of the year. Also, our next round of online courses with them starts the first week in September. You can enjoy medium level one, and that introduces you to your psychic sense. Once you get some good practice with that, then medium level two, and that's when we bring in more of the spirit world. They also have an upcoming class called Embracing the Healing Power. Whether you're a medium or not, healing is very real and it can enhance your mediumship, or you can just know about that world of healing and how best to use that. So that's coming up with Carrie and Phil and with our dear friend, Scott on Mondays, he has trance and the altered states. You'll find me also moderating and in that class as well. It's a beautiful opportunity to learn how to slow down that busy mind and really feel the love from the unseen world. On Tuesdays, he offers sitting for the power hours and anyone in medium training or anyone just as a human being, that's a wonderful way to just plug ourselves into this valuable power. On Fridays, we have In the Arms of Eternity. It's a wonderful opportunity to not only sit and send healing, but also to be part of a medium demonstration of a different kind with trance mediumship which in Scott is over 26 years sitting on behalf of the spirit world and in his way as well. And so it's an extraordinary conversation that we can be part of and we can ask questions to our friends. Also, uh, Scott will be traveling in November. He'll be in New Orleans with Darren. So you get to give him a big hug in person. And he'll also be back there in April with some other plans on the horizon. Everything can be found at wedontdie.com. Just click on the store page. You can register for next week's Sunday gathering. Of course, you don't want to miss it. And last, I just want to send a shout out to our dear friends who have made a little financial contribution our way. We never want to pester anyone about it. We, If you do feel like you want to give, it definitely goes to a good place us helping us survive with the technology, paying for the Zoom big account and all of those good things. It is very appreciated. No pressure, but for those of you who did give, we wanted to say a special thank you. Just a, one last word from me as for the words of the week. When I was talking to you about that, Elena Fernandez and her story, it really hit home with me that we have our own best friend and that's us. People often talk about self-love and, you know, they say, spend some time for you, take a bubble bath, all of that. I think what's a better form of self-love is really being there for ourselves. If you were to look in your life, is there one person that you could talk to about anything, anytime, and that is really wise and wonderful? And I want to tell you, you look at that person in the mirror every day. I like Elina's uh, idea of writing to yourself. So often when we start talking to ourselves in our mind, next thing you know is, did I leave the coffee on? You know, you're, you're caught thinking about other things as well. But if you put the pen to paper or you're typing it, you know, 
Dear Sandra, I'm having an issue with this. What do you say? I tell you, my friends, you are so wise and so powerful. You know the right thing to say. Have that conversation with yourself. Be your own best friend that way. And you will find that you will be less harsh on yourself. You'll give yourself some great advice that you might not have thought of before, but nobody knows you like you. You're gonna be the one that takes yourself through. And I'm sure we all have guides and maybe they can work through you when your hand is writing. So that's my piece of advice for the week. So with that, I would like to send it over to Darren for our closing prayer. Thank you, Sandra, Kerry, and Phil. And thank you, Kerry, for coming up with this wonderful theme. And, and again, thank you to each and every one of you for joining us week in and week out and making week 178 possible. So for that, we thank you. So if you'd all like to close your eyes and join me for today's closing prayer. To our dear friends, brothers and sisters, we'd like to thank you once again for having the faith and the trust in us and coming together as one under that banner of We Don't Die and for allowing us all to immerse ourselves and fall back into the arms of the eternal world once again to prove that life continues after the physical death. To our dear friends, helpers and loved ones of that world we call unseen, we once again like to truly thank you for all that you do and for continuing to be here week in and week out and allowing us all to experience the joy and celebration of bringing the two worlds together as one and for reminding us that location language spoken and background has no barriers or boundaries within your world and there truly is only one language and that is the language of love each and every one of us has got to experience the bringing together of the two worlds once again here today and we are truly grateful for allowing ourselves to be immersed within that power, that unconditional love and that healing balm. And for that, we will be eternally grateful. As we bring this Sunday gathering to a close and allow the sun to set on this day, we go forward to a new day and a new week, continuing to strive and deliver on our own journeys of life. And as we continue our journey of life, we continue to grow, understand and develop. And we can truly do this going forward in the knowledge and understanding to know that you continue to walk by our side, hand in hand, guiding us and inspiring us to truly be the best individual that we can be so that we can rise up and truly live to be the, the true individuals that we truly are. And we ask as always that that healing balm continues to shine to all four corners of our lands to bring that same comfort, happiness joy and love to all those hearts and minds that may be in need on this day and this week and until we meet again my friends amen darren thank you so much i couldn't have said it any better well we have our closing song and it's one i'm sure you know it needs no introduction Wow, what a closing number. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for the tunes. Carrie, it was beautiful. And Phil and Darren and you guys at home, to our friends in the spirit world, go make it a great week. We love you. We thank you. See you soon. Bye. Keep singing. Keep singing.